Hello and thanks for joining us. Within the next hour, Dutch safety investigators will release a report into what caused Malaysia Airlines flight MH17 to crash in eastern Ukraine last July. The relatives of those killed have just been briefed on the report's contents. They were told that the aircraft was hit by a Russian-made book surface-to-air missile. They were also advised that passengers on board didn't suffer and lost consciousness more or less straight away. Well, the plane was flying from Amsterdam to Kuala Lumpur when it crashed in this field near the village of Grabova. All 298 people on board died. It happened at the height of the conflict between government troops and pro-Russian separatists. Dutch safety investigators are due to release a report of what caused the crash. It'll also look at the issue of civilian planes flying over conflict zones. It'll look at also why some relatives had to wait four days before the Dutch authorities confirmed that their loved ones had been killed. Well, in the last few minutes, our correspondent Anna Holligan spoke to Barry Sweeney, the father of one of the victims who was inside the briefing. Barry Sweeney there, uh, father of one of those on board that plane. Well, at a pre-emptive news conference in Moscow, the Russian arms manufacturer Almaz Anti insisted its own experiments proved that the plane could only have been hit by an old version of the book, not used at the moment by Russian forces. That uh, news conference was held earlier today by the Russians manufacturing the book missile. Well, Anna Holligan, our reporter, is at The Hague in the Netherlands. And Anna, uh, we know that obviously you've been speaking to some of the family members. We do have a special live page on all the developments at the website, background articles too, and we'll be keeping you right. Yolan Nell there in Jerusalem. Now, the first Democratic presidential debate in the US will take place in Las Vegas on Tuesday evening this evening. Hillary Clinton is the front runner and Bernie Sanders, a US senator from Vermont, is her prime challenger. But hanging over Tuesday's contest is a speculation about whether Vice President Joe Biden will enter the race. James Cook reports from Las Vegas. Do stay with us here on BBC News. Much more to come. Now, the child soldier film Beasts of No Nation depicts the brutal descent into war in an unnamed West African country. It features Idris Elba in the role of a warlord who trains an orphan as a child soldier, played by a 14-year-old first-time actor from Ghana, Abraham Atta. Well, Nkem Nikodisha has been speaking to Abraham and the film's writer and director, Kerry Fukunaga. This is BBC World News. I'm Geetha Gurumuthi with the latest headlines for you. Now, it's the only one of its kind in the world, but its days are numbered. The last flying Vulcan bomber will take to the skies for the final time before the end of this month. It causes a stir every time it flies due to its unique shape and earth-shaking roar. Well, it's best known for carrying out the longest ever raid of its kind during the Falklands War in 1982. Danny Savage reports from its base at Robin Hood Airport near Doncaster. Well, from real-life battles to superheroes. In fact, for more than 75 years, superheroes have been fighting evil, of course, in comic books, on TV and in blockbuster movies. Well, today, Superman, Batman, Spider-Man and Wonder Woman are multi-billion dollar global brands. The New York Historical Society has just opened an exhibition which traces their origins back to the Depression and the First World... Sorry, the Second World War. Well, one of the curators told us a bit more. Well, let's hope the popularity of the Rugby World Cup will encourage a younger generation of players into the sport. Let's hear from one rugby fanatic in Senegal. That's it from me. See you soon. Bye-bye.